Hey, this is Bjorn Rebney, CEO and Chairman of Bellator MMA. You're watching ProMMANow.com. Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here with Bjorn Rebney. Just a couple days before your debut on Spike TV. How's it going, sir? It's going good. Busy, but good. All right, I got a couple questions for you. You've answered a ton today in the scrum and other things, but um, I do want to bring up uh, Rampage as a possibility because, you know, someday maybe you guys could look at him. He's a guy who probably only wants maybe one to three more or four more fights. Um, and, and I think it would be really interesting because he loves pro wrestling. I think he's a guy that would love a possible King Mo Bellator fight once or twice and then go over and segue his career and his personality and his charisma into a TNA deal, and I think Spike would like that. So it might be a nice angle where you can get a big name and just for, you know, maybe it's not a tournament, it just maybe it's just one fight, or maybe it's a tournament. Um, but, you know, what do you feel about that? Because I, I know, I know I used to train with Rampage, and right. I know his personality, and you know him too, so that might be something that... You've given this a lot of thought. I've actually. given it some thought, because <laughs> I, I want to see, you know, I don't want to see him in, like, no shows that don't happen. I yeah. want to see him fight, and I would like to see, you know, him going against King Mo in the TNA ring. I mean, I'm not a huge pro wrestling fan, but certainly I would tune in when those guys are on. Sure. I mean, even you would. Come on, be honest. Yeah, look, I, 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 I watch Rampage in Pride. I watch Rampage with great excitement when he transitioned over here and was fighting in the UFC. Um, I'm a big fan, you know, but, but I mean, and I don't mean like sidestep the question, but hyper focus right now is on what's going on right this second. He's got another fight going on in the UFC, and, and you know, let's see what happens on that. I know how they had a big media call this morning about it. Um, but, you know, he's, he's a talent. I mean, he's obviously a talent, and he, he's probably closing in on the end of an illustrious career. Who knows? You know what I mean? He, he's an electrifying personality. He's a movie star. Um, is an incredibly exciting fighter, but, you know, you never know. We'll yeah, you have else. other things to focus on, but when it comes to it, that's something that maybe you and Spike and him and people, everyone could sit down and, and talk about and say, hey, can we make something work here? You and, never, and you know, you never know. You never know. I mean, he is, there's, there's unique personalities. I think Mo is the consummate personality for that right now. He's a 205 that when he's not injured and he's not injured now, I think he's one of the best 205 in the world. He's got a crazy over-the-top personality, and but that's just who he is. That's how he carries himself every single day. He just like lights up the room. He walks into the room and you go, King Mo, superstar. And, and he's doing incredible stuff with Dixie. He's learning the game and impact and stuff like that. So he's the perfect fit for that. And Mo's got years and years left on his MMA career. So, you know, I mean, he, he is that perfect guy. And, and I think what we'll ultimately do is Dixie and I and Kevin and Spike will look and see how the whole mode situation works. And if it works half as well as I anticipate that it will for him, maybe that will open our eyes to other potentialities. And I mean, you know, look, Rampage is There's only a few talent. characters that could, yeah. could do that crossover. Yeah, because so. look, you, you can't, and we were talking about it in there earlier, you can't look at something like that and say, hey, who's the wrestler we can make into the mixed martial arts? That just doesn't work. You can't. It might go the other way around. But the other way around, yeah. you've got the right mixed martial artist who can compete at a world-class level, and they've got big, over-the-top personalities like Mo. They can conceptually translate over, and, and you look at a guy like Rampage, and you go, well, you know, sure, he's big, he's a movie star, he's got, you know, he's got... I'm hoping make it happen. All right, we'll see. Know. At least maybe <laughs> bidding wars are going to happen. And, and uh, you know, speaking, you brought up bidding wars with King Mo, and obviously the Alvarez situation. Situation. Do you, is, it, is that going to change things if this starts happening more and more frequently between Bellator and UFC? You, you never know. I mean, my anticipation is that at this point, given our partners at Viacom and our backing from Spike, that you'll see a lot more of kind of the back and forth of guys conceptually at the UFC looking over here and guys at the end of their tail end of their limits with Bellator looking at maybe over here. So we'll see, we'll see how the thing plays itself out. Just to go over one point on, on, on the contract issue is you stated. He was not offered pay-per-view points. That's not a guarantee unless you're a GSP Anderson Silva, one of the big champions, that you're going to be on a pay-per-view, let alone headline one, and get pay-per-view percentage points. That was not in the UFC offer, correct? Right. They talked about what would happen if he were on a pay-per-view, but they didn't talk about guaranteeing him a pay-per-view. So we looked at it today. There are certain aspects of this that we've got to match that are guaranteed, how much he makes, the signing bonus, how many fights in what period. But those things that may or may not happen, you can't be held to have to match. Okay, so yes, I understand. That's what I wanted to clarify from a legal situation. That makes sense. He's looking at, well, potentiality down the line. Of course, an, an athlete wants to make his money for his family, doesn't know how long his career is going to last. I see things from his side, but I definitely see things from your side as well. It's what's black and white offered. That's what you guys have. Sure, mentioned. and you know, hope. my hope against hope is we are able to resolve this. My hope against hope is, you know, Eddie and I had four years of a really good relationship where we were friends, and about the last three to four weeks, we have not had such a good relationship. 
And, uh, you know, I mean, I hope it gets resolved. I hope one way or another it, it, it works itself out. Will Bellator continue to put on female fights, WMMA oh, fights? absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Felice Herring is standing right over there. Mm -hmm. She's awesome. She just had a big win for us. Um, uh, Jessica Evil Eye just had an amazing submission, a standing Standing submission against her. Her. Was that was insane. I liked it. Yeah, and as and it was happening, I was thinking, man, is she going to take her off her feet? Because that's what nine yeah. out of ten people would. That's what Marlon Sandro did in yeah. Bellator 58. That's oh. what the, you guys can learn it on my YouTube channel. Yep. So I mean, we've got some really talented ladies who can really fight and have got great personalities. So we're going to keep the commitment to the women's game going. Absolutely. You and, and Dana White have never. He's never really had a bad thing to say about you. Um, do, do you hope that that will continue that way, or if you see things maybe starting to get a little more tense as bidding wars, and now you're on spike, and now you're more of a, a threat, sort of say? You know, it, that, I mean, tough to say. I don't know. I mean, I've just, I, I, I watched with great interest because I've been kind of a, a student of the game for a lot of years, and I watched um, Elite XC and the IFL, and I watched guys stand up on soapboxes and point at the UFC and say stupid things, and I thought to myself, if you're a hardcore fan of the game, you've been watching them for a lot of years. Good fights are good fights. Good fights are good fights, and great fighters are great fighters. you got to respect people who work like dogs to try to make it all work. So I, I just that's never been my game. You what know, if it comes down to it? I heard you're training with Tiki here at HB Ultimate <laughs> Training Center, right? You're doing grappling and striking, the whole MMA Yeah, my striking game? Is, is absolutely useless. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Game, my striking is just as poor as Well, in that case, we can spark some time. That'll be good. <laughs> but, I mean, what about, you know, if it ever comes to it, maybe contractual issues. You know, back in the day, Dana and, and Lorenzo were supposed to settle it, and he was doing jujitsu, but that was 10 years ago. He was doing boxer size before that. Maybe if it came to it, could you guys settle your differences in the in the ring or the cage probably, someday? Probably not. You got you're reach looking, on him. Yeah, He's got looking, a little yolk on you. But you're but, looking at an older dude who's just pretty well focused on 18 hours a day of business, so I think I'll just let the businesses be. All right, guys, so. awesome card. I'll be covering it this Thursday in just two days on Spike TV, the debut on Spike, and then the following week we're at King Mo, so we got two title Oxford. fights. Don't forget about that one as well. Two weeks from two weeks from Thursday night. There you go, guys. Go to ProMMAnow.com for all your information. Thank you, sir. Thanks, dude.